Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, welcome to Rentatez. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great weekend, great weekend plans. So, uh, quick updates for our channel here. Uh, so I decided that let's take a break from our cube series and we will move on to something called the subscribers week, right? So that's what I thought it is. Uh, and it's subscribers week today. So what that basically means is, um, I got my first mail from our subscriber, uh, Frosty. I know uh, you know what's going to happen exactly. That's your model. Uh, so he sent me a mail. Here it is. So when I get mails like this, and this being my first, and I'm, I'm still a small YouTuber, right? So I decided, you know what? Uh, le let me just make models for you, which you are trying to, you know, do at your home. So every once in a while, when I get, uh, when I do get emails. I'll select one and then we'll do a subscribers week and that week your model will be shown and then we we all can model it together right so this is the model here it's actually tricky this is really tricky for someone who's just starting out right and uh, this is really cool that you guys are taking models from your house and then you know trying to model that's the best way to do it awesome so um, subscribers week videos will be shorter i'll try to keep them short i'll edit them i'll just get to the point so that you guys can know exactly how i'm thinking and what i'm trying to do okay so for this uh let's start okay awesome so okay uh <laughs> where's the cylinder okay cool there it is so i'm gonna bump this up really high right because we want that to be smooth okay cool so when we have that, let's make this base first. So I'm gonna scale that, bring that down, bring that down like that. Okay, so I know it's thick at the moment. It's thick, uh, <laughs> okay, so, uh, that, oh, let me, let me switch this on for you guys. Oh, and I was thinking of modeling this using just vanilla blender so we won't be using any hard ops so don't worry guys everyone can do this okay so um now that we have this so you uh, you see this thickness here this is something we need to work on first right so if you're going to edit um delete uh this face delete this face so what we will do now is go into edge mode alt click to select the whole thing press i Oh wait, does it not insert? Oh, oh yeah. So press E to extrude and then press S. Oh, here you can go ahead and actually give the thickness you want. Uh, this thickness is basically this is what I'm trying to do. And then extrude again and scale it in. This edge loop is called a supporting edge loop, right? So that's, that's what this is and then press F to fill it. Okay, cool. Now that this is done, we'll go to object mode, right? Oh, uh, wait. Before we do that, select this uh, bottom uh, edge here, and then if you put cursor to select it here, and in object mode, let's go say origin to 3D cursor. So there you go. Now what you can do is come here, add a modifier, and then search mirror, mirror it on the Z, and there you go. So it mirrors it from the origin. So with that, done just say apply now you can see that it is really really thick now <laughs> so you'll just press s z and then there you go now you can like you know uh you can thin it out there you go that looks good and now if you want you can get rid of this so dissolve edges you don't need that edge anymore because the merge uh does it uh from the middle okay cool guys now that we have this right uh what can what is the next step you ask cool so this is how i would approach uh, this part which is really tricky here is um firstly go into object go into wireframe and then let's go to edit mode select vertices no let's select faces i'm just going to select all these faces here right or better way to do this is just select this face here and then control shift select that see right and then hold shift select this face control shift select this 
select this face and the control shift select that. Awesome. So now that you have uh, what you want for this thing to rise, um, cool. With this selected, just hit P. Uh, P is for separate. So when you separate, you just say selection. What this does is it breaks this model into two pieces, your selection and your normal one. I'm going to take uh, the selected, uh, the new piece, go to edit, go to vertex, select this vertex, shift eight, uh, shift S, cursor to selected. There you go, the cursor is here now. Go into object mode. And then you can do origin to 3D cursor. If you want all these options, it's an object, set origin, and you have your origins here, okay? So that's how you do it. Now you can come here, press R, and then hit 90, and check that out. You have that shape here, right? So I hope uh, this makes sense. Now that we have this, there are a few things we need to do. Uh, first, we need to fix this. So I'm gonna shift H that to isolate, go to edit mode, select vertices, uh, select uh, edges. I'm going to select this edge here, shift select this, and then this edge here. Press right click and then say bridge edge loops. And there you go, right? So it bridges all the edge loops. So now once that's done, this is something you have to do uh, because Blender is a little bit finicky in that. We'll have to select this face here. Yeah, cool. And then I'm going to separate this by selection. Go to object mode, you'll understand why. I'm going to isolate this, edit mode, with the edge selection tool. Select this tool, press F to fill that, and go to object, press Alt H to bring everything back. Now you take this part, here, isolate it, edit mode. So you can see that even this has uh, the hollow, hollowness over here. So select these edges, press shift, and then select these edges, right? Right click, bridge edge loops, perfect. Go into face and select this face at the bottom here. So when you alt click and select, it selects the whole loop, press P, separate selection, go to object and bring everything back. Now you will notice that these two are separate objects. Before we do anything, I'm gonna select these two, right? And if you guys notice on the reference here, this has a smooth curve, right? So basically you can move this, let me select this. So if you move this here, this will basically uh, be the curve which you're trying to fill, right? And Frosty was having uh, issues with this. So uh, basically, bud, what you can do is if you move this just a little bit up here, I'm going to exaggerate this because I want the viewers to know exactly what I'm doing. So something like that. You would actually keep a very close distance. You don't need that much, okay? Like almost like here or even lower. So this is just so that you guys can understand perfectly. Uh, so now that you have this gap, right? This is what I would do. I would select this piece here and this piece here, right? Which we created and then hit control J. So you join that and then isolate it, right? And once this is isolated, you can go into object, apply all transforms. So that's clean. Now go into edit mode, select your edge, select this edge, control shift, select this edge, right? and then right click and then say bridge edge loops. There you go, right? Now that your edge loops are bridged, uh, you can obviously see that it's curved here. So what you have to do is change options here. So you go into blend surface, make sure it's smooth and number of cuts. When I hit two and hit enter, check that out. That's exactly what we want, right? So this is what uh, you were struggling with. So if you do it this way, this should help you. Now, if I hit 10, see how smooth it is? This is exactly the smoothness we need, right? We will push this up a little bit. Uh, remember, you guys can uh, lower it if you don't want that much. Now, go into object mode. And then, do you remember this? If I go into edit, this face here, you guys remember how we bridged it? That needs to go because that wasn't there. We actually just added it because we wanted to bridge this. You understand why I added that face? This is why. So now go into object mode, press Alt H to bring everything back. And now check this out. Look at your model, dude. Come on, come on. Tell me that's that's not good. That's, that's not good. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so uh, now check this out, Frosty. Look at that. Look how clean it is, right? So it's perfect. You can see that you have your shape here, you have your curve here. I hope this is what you wanted. Uh, so basically, I would do it this way. So now ev every new person who's learning this, you see how I tackle my problems. Break it into small pieces and then solve it. It, it should help you, right? Now that this is done, let's continue. I will select this, this and this back, control J, join them, and then go to wireframe, go to edit, go to vertex, select all these vertex, because some vertex are, you know, we disjoint them, so they need to get merged again. Press M and then merge by distance. When you do that, do you see at the bottom of the screen, it says removed 10 vertices? That's Blender understanding that, okay, everything needs to be joined. Now, go into object mode and then go to solid. And there you have it. You have one really clean piece. Look at that. Everything is perfect. Okay, now this needs to be duplicated on the other side. So we can do that now. I'm going to go to wireframe, edit mode, face select mode, select all these faces here, press X and delete faces. Right? And then this face here can be deleted as well. And this face here can be deleted as well. Okay, now I'll just go to object mode, solid. Now that this is here, right, all you have to do, guys, is add a mirror modifier again, right, and then this will be on the Y. There you go. Now you just mirrored this over here, right, and you don't have to double work, D never double work. Okay, so come here, just say apply. Now, if you go into edit mode, select the edges. Now you'll understand why I told you to make this inner edge. Check this out. You can just select the whole ring. If this was not here and this was just stuck to all this, it would be a problem. That's why you always need supporting edge loops, right? So I'm going to select the bottom one, press F, select the top one, press F, and there you go. Ta-da! Cool. Now let's move, move on. So these are some references uh, Frosty gave me. Now let's make this, okay? So we come over here on the top, we go to wireframe, and then go into edit mode, select faces, and you can select how many ever faces you want here. So I'll take two, 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 and then two, two here, and then two here, and then zoom out and see if that's enough for me. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so once this is done, I'll just press E, extrude it. Now, if you wanna flatten this out, are you, you have seen how I do it on my other videos, so you have to scale it, scale it on which axis the z axis and you want to scale it to zero and then it flattens it out okay so now once that's done press g z and now you can select the height of this and then uh, i am going to scale this over here obviously because you can see that it's a little shorter press Control r you can add an edge loop right there in the center press s and y and i'm going to bring this down as well and then g and c Bring this down here. Now, if you control B, oh, my bad. Why did that not work? Here, let me go into object mode. Okay, cool. Let me see edit. So, okay, cool. So if you select this edge and control B, oh, you see how it's getting messed up? It's not beveling it, right? Okay, let me see. If I go into object, apply all transforms. How about now? Edit, control B, C. This is why you need to uh, tr uh, all transforms, guys. It cleans up the mesh, so it's helpful. So this, I'm just gonna push it here, right? And then just give it edge loops. And object one. Ta-da! There you go. So you have that smoothness. Uh, now, obviously, over here, it's not smooth because it's cut. Uh, this is where you'll have to know topology if you want to keep your topology correct because for example this is just we are just going to keep this for render purposes so i can actually just select this right control b this and you see i can just give it edge loops here right and see how it automatically smooths it out right but this topology is not right to fix this you actually needed a support edge loop running here just like that right so obviously that if i mean Learning topology is a whole new different thing. And if you guys want, I can teach you that as well. But for this video's sake, this should work. Frosty, this will work for you. And you can just give it less edge loops here and then more over here. And then you should have a smoother curve, okay? So 
now that this is done that's the that's the main part which was uh, troubling you so i hope this helped right uh, i actually made this really narrow you can see it's a little bit thick so you guys can do that now let's just make a makeshift handle uh, because this should be easy um, so shift a we're just going to add a cube scale it down bring it up scale it that's good yeah this is too damn thin <laughs> my bad and then push this in here let's uh let's actually yeah that's that's perfect let's push this here and then scale it on the x okay cool now what we can do is go to edit control uh control r i want so you can see on the reference i'm just gonna follow the reference just a little bit here you need one edge loop here and then you need one edge loop somewhere over here yeah go to wireframe vertex select like that and this is a little narrow just like that and this is a little narrow just like that object mode solid there you go so this handle is done uh, remember how we move this away from the center to get the curve so you will have to uh, move this as well I'll eyeball that perfect now you can see it over here it already looks cute <laughs> our food pressure okay so that that's good now uh, all you have to do is you can see that it's just smooth overall everywhere right so I'm just going to go to object apply all transforms go into edit mode wireframe mode take edges select all edges Go back into solid, control V, and there you go. Okay, uh, make sure that your bevels are clean. Do you see how this goes weird? Yeah, it does that from, I don't know why it does that, but let's just keep it maybe like that, right? Or what you can do is control V, give this like, you know, just a little bit like this, right and you can see how it's coming uh, it's smooth but it's low poly at the moment right you see that so once you have this right once you have this what you can do is go to add modifier and then you can just give it a sub d guys subdivision surface there you go see it's smooth stuff right levels in the viewport make that too there you go and then just say apply Ta -da! now look at your handle it looks much more cleaner right so you can do it either way right and then I'm just going to give it a sharpen. And look at that. That's beautiful. Ah, stop calling me. Okay. Uh, for <laughs> do -da, do -da, do -da. I don't know if you guys play Dota, but okay, awesome. Cool. So we'll just give this ridge cut here. And you can see that there are ridge cuts here as well. If I show you guys how to make this using Boolean, this is almost, the this is exactly the same. It's not almost. You just put it on the surface and then you Boolean it. Right? So for that, what we are going to do, take a cube, right? Bring that up here, scale that somewhat like that, and then scale it on the X. There you go. Scale this down, scale, and then on the Z, perfect, right? Now, if you notice, this space here needs to be scaled like that. If you guys can see that it's basically like that now you see it has a curve on top and bottom right so how do we do that uh pretty simple we'll just go to object before we do anything just make sure all transforms are set go to edit mode select your edges this this go in this view press ctrl v check that out and then add in loops Ta-da! and then this this and then add in loops oh yeah look at that so that's your that's your shape right so once you have your shape you want to cut out you click on the object which needs the cutout right and then you just add a modifier and we will add a boolean modifier once you add a boolean modifier don't do anything guys just let it stay to difference and then select you see this eyedropper tool click on that and then select the object you want the shape to cut out right so you want this to cut out so just select this Select this object here and then hide it in the viewport. And we don't want this in our render, so hide it in the render as well. So once that's done, there you go. You have your cutout. Look at that. 
look at the render view it looks so nice <laughs> and you know th these this is like that small happiness where you take uh things from your own home and you try to model it and it actually starts working out so it's really cool it looks amazing awesome so that's pretty much it that's it frosty <laughs> so this is how i would go uh making your model uh i hope you learned uh more like uh like i hope this solves your doubts you can see that this part is a little sharp remember what i told you guys uh add in less edge loops here but then make it more over here right so it's just trial and error just try it by yourself i know you can do it uh, i hope uh, this basic video at least helped you guys no no add-ons nothing but uh this was this was the request from frosty guys so this was a subscriber special again so i was thinking we will do this uh if you guys find something hard please talk to me i will help you right uh, i've been doing 3d for almost six years and i work in the AAA uh gaming company as well yeah i make games for you guys so with all that said uh you know just just do it if you guys really want help let me know let me help you I will help you do your 3D, uh, you know, dreams or whatever. Okay. But with that said, uh, yeah, special week, uh, new playlist. It'll be in my uh, channel. You guys can go check that out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Render test out. Bye bye. Oh,